Okay, let's get started. Let's create an iPad landscape interface to control an Aspen SPN 1624 via IP. You'll notice in the Aspen iPad Getting Started folder that's provided, uh, the file that you'll be using for Command Fusion is Aspen iPad Getting Started blank GUI. This is just a blank template that we can use to get started that already has the commands for the Aspen 1624 built in. You'll also get a macro file for the Aspen. That's what makes our box uh, very unique and able to do these types of things is that we have a macro-based language that we can use to give information back to Command Fusion. Also, you'll find some graphical items, backgrounds, buttons, LCDs, sliders, slider knobs. These are the elements that we're going to use to actually create the interface. So let's get started. Let's launch the uh, Aspen iPad Getting Started blank file. When you do that, you'll be presented with this particular screen here. Now you'll notice that all we have is the name of the file for the project. We don't really have anything else to work with. And if you look to the right here, you'll see System Manager. And in System Manager, there'll be a device, Aspen 1624, with an IP address. If we double click that, this is where you can enter the information for your Aspen 1624 or other Aspen device, whether it's a Trio or a 1612 or whatever you might have. You can give the system a name, whatever you like, and then give its IP address. This is 192.168.1.200, a very standard IP address. And you want to make sure it's on the same network as your computer and your iPad. Uh, the def port number is 4080. Port origin is 4080 as well. And that's the default port number of the Aspen device. And then TCP box is checked. And we have maintained constant connection. Also, the rest of this is default. These are blank. These are zeros. Startup command is none. So if we go with that, what we'll see next, if we expand the items underneath the uh, system, uh, these we provided for you. So I'll explain these in another lesson and tell you how to build the commands and then how to build feedback. These little gear icons are actually commands. Here's where you create and add commands. And uh, these icons here are for feedback. And this is where you build feedback. And we'll get to that a little later. For now, let's just build a very simple blank interface. First thing we need to do is let's select our project. And I'm going to select the Create New Page tool. I'm going to introduce the tools as I use them instead of going through every tool in the interface. So let's click on that. And you'll notice it says New Page. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, go to Page Properties. And I'm going to name this New Page Main. You can name it whatever you like. Uh, that's just what I'm going to use. And I'll select it to be my start page. Uh, we'll get to the rest in just one second. Let's click OK. And we're going to use not portrait mode, but landscape mode. And you could use both if you wanted to for free. So in landscape mode, you'll notice it's just this blank page. We want to add a graphical element to that. Well, what you need to do in order to add graphical elements is you need to go through the theme manager if you can use your own graphics. So notice there's backgrounds, buttons, gauges and sliders, input fields, and text. Well, I'm going to click on the background, and I'm going to add a new theme. I'm going to click on the Create New Theme icon, and I'm going to call this new theme Aluminum. OK, now I need to go grab the image. So for background image, I'm going to click on Browse, and I'm going to navigate to my Aspen iPad Getting Started folder, and I'll find a graphic in there called Aluminum. It's a 1024 by 768, which is the landscape uh, perspective of the iPad. Let's click OK. Open, and notice that the Aluminum fills the screen. We'll click OK. And now what we want to do is now that we have backgrounds, notice I can expand that. It says Aluminum. I'm going to right click in the middle of the page, select Page Properties, and I am going to select a landscape theme, and notice it is now available. Aluminum, click OK, and we have a nice background. At this point, let's create a very simple button to send a mute command. And uh, it'll be the, the very easiest way to connect to the box. So let's try that. Well, let's do that. Let's go to Buttons, and let's create a new Mute Button theme. So I'm going to click on the Create New Theme. 
And notice uh, the name is new theme one. I'm going to call this mute because it could be a mute in, could be a mute out. So just a, a generic mute. Now notice there's an inactive state and an active state, and there's also text in here. I don't want the text because my mute button happens to have text on it already. I'll highlight the text in the text field and delete that. Next, I'll click on Browse to go to the background image that I want to use. And uh, you'll notice there's a button in here called Mute Off. Let's select that, click Open, and it appears. So that's my inactive state when the button is up and unpressed. My active state is going to be the pressed version of the button. Once again, let's go to Browse, and we'll select Mute On. Click OK or Open, and now we have an inactive and an active state. Okay, that's what we want to use. We can discuss the other properties within this box a little later. Let's click OK. Notice buttons now, if we expand it, has a mute button within it. Now let's go to the button tool. Notice just to the right of the button tool, we have a drop down menu and we will select mute. And we get a crosshair now. As we pull that crosshair out, you'll notice that the mute button appears and it tells us the, uh, the width and the height in pixels of that button. Also its position on the screen and its join number which we'll talk about later. Uh, the button happens to be a ping file uh, which is basically a bitmap with a 8-bit alpha channel so that it can carry a mask and it allows it to be completely translucent and self-embossed against whatever background you have. So that's very convenient to use ping files. We'll talk more about that later as well. There's so many cool things in here that you're going to have fun with. Okay, now that we have that, I'm going to click the arrow tool, and I'm going to double click on the button, and notice we get more properties. Well, one of the properties I'm going to use right off the bat is command macro. The commands, remember, live over here in System Manager. A macro is simply a, it's a container that holds multiple commands uh, simultaneously, so you can run a sequence of commands if you like. The command that I'm going to select is I want to use the input mute one command. The input, uh, it's the first channel, channel number one, let's mute that. I'll select input mute one, I'll click OK, and now we're ready to test. So in the next video, we'll actually download the iPad app and uh, the CF Viewer app, and we will upload this particular file to the iPad and we'll test it.